Charles, you want to make sure you uh, get uh, undercover here pretty quickly there. Yeah, and there is a grand view right there as you're, it's really lining up the 61 quite well. Because of there's, because of the fact that there are so many storms uh, right now, there's going to be a little bit of a lag before we get the next scan because it's nearly all of this rain that's showing up. Sorry about that. I'm doing, uh, might be needing some parts of it on beta because of the tornado warning. There, hence the reason we still have that tornado warning under in effect. And yeah, right there, yeah. right near the town of Wapolo. So that's really right on US 61 and moving to the northeast very quickly at 50 miles per hour. So that would put areas to the northeast of Wapolo, possibly near Fruitland, hope probably within the next 20 to 30 minutes. Yeah, and it's it, it, it's not a real uh, good scan, but it sure does stick out. Those those different colors, that's how we use Doppler radar. Those When those different colors are next to each other, that indicates winds of different direction right next to each other. And if you think about anything that's spinning, well, you look at the left side, it's going uh, in one direction, the right side is going another direction, and that's the whole basis of why we use Doppler radar to find tornadoes. And you can certainly see a lot of uh, different colors right around Wapolo. So that could indicate that spin that would be right about where we'd look, where that little notch was on our storm. As we uh, move this, I'm, I'm going to just kind of move up the line here um, in terms of looking for those little notches and see if they have any more spin. And right now, Wapolo stands out. You can see there isn't a whole lot more north of there around Let's Conesville or Nichols. As we go up the uh, line here toward West Liberty and West Branch, again, not a lot happening. And then look at what happens in our tornado worn box right there. You see, once again, that area of very different colors right next to each other and this is just uh, around and to the south and east of Solon now getting into Cedar County west of Tipton so yeah there's there's that's kind of the thumbprint of something going on which could be a possible tornado and as we uh, take this out uh, let me get rid of that pardon me uh, two tornadoes one more time um, I, Columbus I and now you went Fiji it's that line of storms about a county north of Interstate 80 and then dropping south of Interstate 80 to the Iowa, no, not quite to the Iowa border anymore. Well, it really is, but it's just not that strong. Say, let's say Highway 34. North of Highway 34. I, I think that is all the pack man. Definitely the strongest Mouth, part of this tiny. line of storms, which continues to bear down on eastern Iowa. Moving to the east at, let's say, 50 miles per hour, our last uh, estimate. And this is what has yet to even move through the Quad Cities. We've got a little bit of a break right now. Those storms that were here about half hour, 45 minutes ago, giving us some lightning, some thunder, some rain. Those have moved to the north, uh, and these are going to be pushed into by that line that's just off to the west, which includes uh, the severe thunderstorm warnings and our tornado warnings. So once again, to give you an idea of what those warnings are, Jones County, Cedar County, and Johnson County, tornado warning till 315. As we move to our tornado warning to the south, that would be Louisa. County until 3:15, and moving a little bit. Uh, sure, I'm going to be west, on for now. South, in terms of our severe thunderstorm warnings, uh, Lynn County, of course, that's the home of Cedar Rapids. Johnson for County until 3:15 okay. for the severe thunderstorm warning. Uh, Muscatine County, severe thunderstorm warning. Western Muscatine. We're County, finally going to be on for so next. Getting, uh, in your area uh, right now. So again, you're going to notice some next quick 10 minutes. deteriorating weather conditions. Take shelter at this point. Uh, we still got some strong weather in Louisa County, also Henry County, Iowa, and as we look toward Des Moines. County, I'm right here. Uh, Muscatine. Warning continues there until 3:30, and even into Lee County, Iowa. Uh, that severe thunderstorm warning again, part of that uh, northern uh, warning that goes till 3:30 as well. With now western Lee County still under the gun until 3:15. Now that line of storms south of Highway 34 is starting to weaken a little bit. And we just we're just getting uh, some new reports in for you, Eric. Uh, okay, we well. have an actual observed tornado now that is six miles southwest of Mechanicsville. So that put it uh, right there in okay. Cedar County, and that is uh, now moving northeast at 50 miles per hour. And that's the area we were watching earlier that moved through Solon or just south of Solon where they had the observed uh, tornado. So right there, just now six miles.
miles southwest of Might be two tornadoes on the ground. West, or excuse me, northeast at 50 miles per hour. And uh, again, that was an observed tornado. Zarek just pulls that out right there. South of Mount Vernon, moving northeast. I think now the sirens the are going off for the severe right, thunderstorm the warning. Or Stanwood, this is why you want to take shelter immediately. I bet on the next scan of radar that we get, uh, that distance of 5.8 miles is going to be uh, clipped. I mean, that's going to be all rain right up to Mechanicsville. And I've drawn that distance line right to the notch that we're interested in because those little notches on the front lines of these storms, those are usually where we find the rotation and uh, that means that it's now getting to western Cedar County and so if you are in western Cedar County, especially northwest Cedar County between Stanwood, Mechanicsville, anywhere in that area, you're going to want to take shelter uh, immediately. I would even say even outside this, this tornado watch or warning box, that would, that would probably include uh, Olin and Clarence as well and even probably as far northeast is Oxford Junction to start watching this very closely and start considering taking their tornado precautions. Yeah, that's right. That's a good point, too, because Olin is right there in the path of the storm. So if you're in Olin or Morley in southern Jones County, uh, you are in the path of this tornado. And do they have any? You said it was a, a confirm. You did get some? Yeah, it was an observed tornado, observed, okay. and that was six miles southwest of Mechanicsville, and that came in at 303. So that's three minutes ago. Based on that movement at northeast at 50 miles per hour, that generally would put it directly over Mechanicsville at this point and yep. still tracking northeast at a pretty good clip so Olin, Stanwood, Morley you take your tornado precautions right now. Yeah, because again, we, we're covering five to six mile uh, uh, dis, dis, distances in about five or six minutes with the leading edge of the storm. Might be a little slower on the north edge here, but so uh, we got still, until 315 uh, for the cover morning. The uh, county south of us, so we got to go under long enforcement there now, uh, confirming it again one mile south of Mechanicsville. So there you go, moving northeast at 50 miles per hour. 14, 15, we got about eight more minutes. minutes ago, probably going to be now just north and east of Mechanicsville, still moving northeast at 50 miles per hour. And this entire line beyond this tornado is also capable of producing pretty significant winds. We're getting measured wind gusts in from Wapolo now of 70 miles per hour. So don't be surprised if some wow. thunderstorm warnings are now going to be issued uh, even further to the east and to west central Illinois. Uh, with those winds now measured at 70, that probably means they are going to start blowing some of the sirens for you uh, here pretty quickly. So those to the south will be for straight line winds. We also have that tornado warning continuing to get uh, new warnings in here for you, Eric. I'm sorry if I interrupt you, but uh, right severe thunderstorm warnings now for Cedar, Clinton, Des Moines, Lee, Louisa, Muscatine, Scott County, Henderson, pretty much the entire TV6 viewing area yep. right along the Mississippi River. And again, measured wind gusts with that uh, of 70 miles per hour. I think I was on. We're actually off under off, so a tornado warning. That's our southern tip for Liberty getting in on the uh, leading edge of that uh, storm. And There's Nichols and, uh, that's in Muscatine County, the very heavy south. rain there now. Conesville already getting it. Fruitland, you're probably just receiving the uh, heaviest of the rain right now, although it doesn't show it on the radar because, again, our radar is so full of data right now with these uh, strong thunderstorms that there is a bit of a delay as we We may get some more on Wednesday. That's what I'm looking at on, on weather.com. That uh, 70 mile per hour wind, and that's headed uh, right across the Mississippi River shortly here. So if you're in New Boston, uh, portions of Mercer, and then uh, Henderson, and Hancock County, you're going to be the first to get these uh, strong storms on the Illinois side of the viewing area. So again, one more time, what we were talking about pretty much coming to fruition here, anywhere north of Highway 34 and along and south of Interstate 80, uh, plus about a county or so north of Interstate 80, that's where the strongest weather is to be found. This is moving to the east, south of I-80, it's moving to the east, to the north of I-80, it's moving to the north and east. And again, we're kind of breaking this up. This area here is moving to the east. Uh, this area here, which includes the tornado around Mechanicsville, that is moving to the northeast. That's why we have what we call a bow echo, and that is bowing out right now as we speak. And that's where we find the strongest winds. Now, Wapolo reporting about 70 miles per hour in terms of the wind speeds, and there is that latest warning that's just been issued. Let me give you an, uh, a, t a time on all that. That includes portions of extreme southwestern Clinton County. That goes till 345. Scott County now, and this will include the Metro Quad Cities, at least a half of it, but let's just call it the whole because we're all going to be getting in on uh, these storms. 345, uh, the rest of uh, the rest of Muscatine County till 345, Rock Island County 345, Mercer County. There we go, 345, uh, Henderson and Warren County 
345, severe thunderstorm warning, and we'll break that off to the south. Eventually, we'll probably get that warning uh, for Henry, or Hancock, I should say, County uh, as things cross uh, the Mississippi near Fort Madison, south of Burlington as well. Any more uh, word on the tornado, Kevin? Uh, not, not of recent, but uh, I, I imagine they're going to reissue this tornado warning or at least extend it further to the north and east, so that would put it uh, near Olin, Oxford Junction, Wyoming. And you know what? Possibly with the way this thing has been sustained about five more minutes. here for the past 25 minutes. Because Liza minutes, is about five, five more Mrs. minutes until it's expiring. So again, the last report was that observed tornado uh, one mile south of Mechanicsville. And uh, now we're getting reports of shelf clouds in Burlington. Uh, really, we get those quite often along the leading edges of these lines of storms. But right there, uh, as we're waiting to get some new data in, it looks like yeah, that cell is right there. Out, out kind of the, separated uh, itself on uh, Mechanicsville. Moving northeast at 50, uh, again, just still waiting uh, on word for a possible reissuance of that possible tornado warning. Yeah, and again, we're, we're dealing with uh, tornadoes, spin-up tornadoes that uh, form along the front lines of these thunderstorms. Not really, if you if you know a little bit about weather, this is not really where you tend to think tornadoes can occur. You're usually looking for uh, discrete, individual, strong supercells that at the southwestern edge of those, the, the tails, will produce tornadoes. Well, because we've got a lot of converging winds on the leading edge of what we call bow echoes, which I just showed you why we call them that, uh, these can tend to lead to spin-up tornadoes that can certainly do F0, F1, F2, EF2 damage, and those are winds that can certainly exceed 100 miles per hour. There we go. We just got the new report in uh, from Stanwood in Cedar County uh, of the tornado still on the ground, and it's uh, unfortunately it is rain-wrapped. Uh, so a very, very difficult to see. That is on the ground. Wood. Tornado exact near whatever town they said might be Cedar County and did observe on the ground rain wrapped tornadoes. So that's almost a very similar location as to where we had the previous reports near Mechanicsville. And this report just came in two minutes ago. So at 3:10 p.m., uh, areas just to the west of Stanwood, an observed tornado on the ground. Okay, and that's again what we were talking about—the rain wrapped problem. I mean, here in this area, no rain. In this area right here, light to moderate rain. In this area right here, when we go to uh, red and yellow, that is extremely heavy rain, visibility squelching rain, and that is why we have the problem of rain wrap tornadoes, and that's why everybody in this area here, uh, right around Stanwood and areas uh, right along uh, uh, the, the, the highway here from Matt. Oh Mechanics my gosh, let's take a look at the window you know right now. We'll be right back to the TV. I'm glad I'm down here. Take a look what's do, doing right now. Oh my gosh. Fifty, sixty some. I was turning that light for my mom. Okay. come down, we will be seeing quite uh, a lot of rain, not only in uh, the Stanwood area, but even to the north and east as we get into southern Jones County, Olin, over to Lost Nation, uh, you folks, Wyoming, uh, get prepared. This is the time that you, this is kind of what we call the golden few minutes, because it's certainly not a golden hour. You've heard of that before, but this is the golden few minutes where you have time to prepare. Make sure you know where your kids are, where your pets are. If you are uh, a child and your parents aren't home, make sure you know where your little brother or sister are. Make sure you know where your pets are, and make sure you know what to do in the path of a tornado. I know where my family is, is right now. The they're still upstairs. I, know what, I don't know what they're doing, but I'm down here. Basement, it's the first floor. Now then you think about getting toward the center, uh, the middle of that level. Get to a small room like a bathroom or a closet, whatever is closest to the middle of that uh, lowest level. Uh, wrap up in a blanket. Make sure uh, you, you have that door shut tight and just wait the storm out. And if you do, you know how to use a cell phone, have one of those with you so you can uh, be talking to mom or dad or your brother or your sister or your grandma or grandpa or your aunt or uncle. And, and just make sure that we, we have uh, they, they uh, communication. Just... They, they just uh, issued the, the new tornado warning. That now does include Cedar, Clinton, and Jackson and Jones County until 4 p.m. And again, uh, as of 3 to 12 p.m., a uh, confirmed tornado near Stanwood moving northeast at 40 miles per hour. So that's going to include Lost Nation, Wyoming, uh, even just south now of Anamosa and into Olin. So that's why we were talking about.
about those towns here earlier. We're giving you hopefully enough lead time to take cover because we still have a confirmed tornado on the ground moving northeast. And uh, as I try to pull it up here on my phone as far as this rotation goes, uh, really I'm concerned with Stanwood and really starting to get into the area near I think Olin, the north uh, side is all done, so you guys can head back upstairs. west of Stanwood. And he's been, as think. we map to south, that would include Onslow or, uh, yeah, and uh, Monmouth as well in northeast Iowa. This entire line right there, that is cells moving northeast at 50 miles per hour and still not having reports of a tornado there to the south on that line like we had earlier but some pretty strong straight line winds uh, are moving into west central illinois and really on areas on the western edge of the qc metro could probably start to experience some pretty significant wind speeds here very soon as eric's trying to load some uh, new radar data in for us here as we're having a little bit of lag time issues but again uh, that new tornado warning as i begin to pull it up now does include cedar thunder. county clinton county jackson county and jones county until 4 p.m that confirmed tornado was near Stanwood and moving northeast at 40 miles per hour. And uh, if you want to maybe try to map this out for us here a little bit, Eric, so we can uh, maybe uh, yeah, just put on some, some more smaller counties, counties possibly yep. that, uh, that I'd... Okay, uh, Liza uh, Muscatine, your guys are all there. done. Yeah, so me, uh, clear that off. We'll get in there real close. And so uh, again, here's there are Stanwood. many it's talking about the north the side right street. now. So and as we move north, Eliza County and the state of Iowa, I think you're all uh, done uh, with the tornado warning. Come back upstairs and enjoy uh, the fun. Should be preparing right now um, to take picking up Wyoming. your tree limbs. Uh, as we get into Jackson County, Monmouth, uh, that's Monmouth, Iowa. So we're all done. So that's going to be it for